this is where we relive some of the great performances uh, from the past of uh, our erstwhile guests here tonight. And Shane, we're going to start with you. Circa 1988, you used to be a regular on Carols by Candlelight. I know you're dying to see this. Let's roll the ugliness. Uh, now, what I want you to do yeah. is very important. I want oh, you to go behind the left. that magic be Christmas no, no, card over there. You're the elf. Yes, and yeah. something magical will happen. Yeah, Darryl, yeah, it looks Believe like Neil Sedaka. <laughs> I think that's actually Circa Man of La Mancha. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, I had to work with this little kid who was the, my assistant elf, who was three years of age, and uh, took a serious disliking to me. <laughs> <laughs> and he wouldn't do anything that Santa would ask him, even in rehearsals, and his mum saying, give him lollies, give him lollies, and all that kind of stuff. On the night at work, because she came with some ice cream, and he loved ice cream, so I was just going, you know, here, come here. <laughs> <laughs> at the end of the thing, I don't know if you remember that, have, you know, so this is Christmas. It's going to be Barry Crocker and Marina Pryor and Ray Martin. And da, 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 da. That could have been Brian Nell, I think. Da, 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 da. All that kind of stuff. And Denise Drysdale, Humphrey B. Bear, and myself and the little elf on my shoulders come out for this. We're the last people on stage. And um, had the little elf, the three-year-old, who was happy now, you know, I had ice cream pouring down the back of my neck, but it didn't matter. <laughs> To, no, this is Christmas, and as I got to about centre stage, the pants kind of dislodged. <laughs> and by the time I hit centre stage, the pants have crashed to the floor. <laughs> I've got the elf. I feel the breeze. <laughs> no, that's a black shot. <laughs> And there's 40,000 people just... To, you could hear them, they were pissing themselves. <laughs> I'm thinking, what do I do? Chuck the kid and pull up the... <laughs> and it's not a good look when you're trying to pull your pants out. You've got a kid on your shoulders. <laughs> and I swear to you, at drinks afterwards, no-one had talked to me. <laughs> I was literally in Poland and, I, and it was the town where the Pope's born. I can't even remember the name of the town because it's banished from my mind forever for Popey reasons. <laughs> and um, I recall that I'm, I suspected I may have been up the duff. Because, um, you I suspected? Been, I suspected for some reason. Um, I need to find out so I can continue either with a lot of this yeah. or none of that oh, at all. Yeah. So I went, oh, I've got to try and find a chemist or pharmacy and they didn't really have, you know, they didn't have a price line in downtown <laughs> Warsaw. <Yeah. laughs> so I'm looking around and I finally found sort of a, a store, a sort of, you know, thing with glass jars in the front window that looked a bit pharmacy and a guy in a coat and I went in and I wanted, you know, the stick. The wee the, stick. A pregnancy test. A pregnancy test. Yeah. Yeah. So I went, and, you know, I can get away with a bit of Italian or French, mm -hmm. maybe Spanish, but Polish is you're beyond me and nothing matches beyond them. at all. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to go and I went, hola, I probably said. <laughs> and I said, mm, yes, no, <laughs> yes, no. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, a tube of something came out and it wasn't what I wanted no, and I had no. to wait till I get home and it was hernia cream. <laughs> <laughs> a whopping big hernia uh, Sophie's um, my wife, my one and only wife, and uh, Howard was her first child and when We'd been to three of six birthing classes. They went through the bit where they say, oh, well, you know, like, you know, if you're your first child, there's, um, uh, you know, the chance that you have false labour and stuff like that. So when that happens, just take a Panadol and go back to bed. Sure enough, five o'clock in the morning, September 15th, 2000, Soph woke me up and said, oh, it's happening, it's happening. I said, no, no, it does. Look, it's five o'clock in the morning. Your first child, probably a couple of weeks early, <laughs> take a Panadol, go back to bed. Because I, because, you know, because I watched a lot of Marcus Welby as a kid, you know. <laughs> So anyway, it all started happening and about 6.15 we got into the car and headed off down the Eastern Freeway in peak hour traffic. Can I tell you, getting her into the car was like shutting the float door on a troublesome horse. <laughs> <laughs> I chucked a couple of dressing gowns and some towels in there. Anyway, off we went down the freeway. The back seat is like, oh, who's coming out? Oh, just keep, keep your legs together, we'll be all right. We're off to the mercy. It's so noisy in the back seat and I'm trying to drive. And... Uh, <laughs> See, we, go, we get to Collingwood Town Hall and it goes quiet. I said, you all right, darling? And she said, yes, he's born, it's a boy. 
Right? I said, now, is he breathing? She says, no, well, the cord's wrapped around. He said, unwrap that. We'll be there soon. <laughs> <laughs> right, so we get, to the, we get to the mercy. I walked into the emergency. I said, now, uh, you know, that kid we were talking about. And they said, yeah, so he's sitting on the back seat. And so uh, Sophie from woe to, uh, go to woe was like about an hour and a half. And as, a, as wonderful an experience it was, it's still a very good argument for vinyl upholstery. <laughs> No, fair, no, really. I mean, I, I live with a guy called Phil, who is a great fellow, uh, but really untidy, right? He was actually a fan of the works of uh, Quentin Crisp. Uh, <laughs> and uh, Quentin Crisp alleged in one of his books that uh, after five years, dust fails to accumulate. And <laughs> he decided to test that theory, right? Yeah. Uh, he never, ever tidied up. And like, yeah, I wasn't the most tidy person of all time, but uh, I came home one day and the front door had been kicked in. I thought, uh-oh, we've been robbed, right? So I thought, but you never know, like, are they still in the joint, right? So I think, oh, I'll go next door and I'll use the phone to ring the police. So I wait at the front and the police come and we walk into my room and like, and they take, they'd taken out the top drawer and they just like thrown the contents all over the floor and it was just strewn everywhere. And I had some cash missing and stuff and I went, okay, yeah, yeah, right, okay. And then we walked into Phil's room and I just hear the cops go, oh, those bastards. <laughs> It's one thing to rob the joint, but they have to do that. And I looked at it and went, I don't think they've been in here. <laughs> no, that's pretty much how we left it. Festival in, uh, in New Zealand and... Uh, no, it's in England. But anyway, it, it's one of those big festivals. And we're all doing gigs. England, and New Zealand. Well, yeah. they're all, they're all the same. Basically, you get the same comics here, you hang out with the same people, and it, they're always great fun, right? But late one night, we're all sitting around in the bar, and uh, there was always... the shows on all night, you know, the early shows, late shows. And the guy running the festival comes in and goes, um, do you guys want to see uh, Kirk Douglas's son doing a gig? And, of course... That's exactly what I wanted. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. He just read my mind, you know. But, but, um, now, you guys are familiar with Kirk Douglas. Does everyone here know the film Spartacus? Yes, again. Yeah. 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 If you don't know the film Spartacus, it's very much like the film Gladiator. Like in Spartacus, it's about a guy called Spartacus. In Gladiator, it's about a guy called Gladiator. And, uh, <laughs> and in Spartacus, Spartacus is a gladiator, right? And he's also a Christian. He's always sticking up for the other Christians. And uh, there's one bit in the film where this old Christian goes dragging a Roman's cart up the hill and it breaks. And at the end of the day, the Romans come into the room where all the Christians are and go, right, who broke the car? And everyone's like, wow, an Aussie Roman. And, uh, <laughs> and Spartacus, to save the other guys any hassle, Spartacus just goes, it was me. And they just whip him and torture him and hurt him and ah, he just takes it for his people. And then later in the film, there's another bit where the, the Romans come into that room again and go, right, you Christians, we're going to crucify all of you unless you give us Spartacus. And it's a really moving bit of the film, right? It's, it's actually incredibly moving. Spartacus gets up and he knows it's all over for him. And he gets up and he goes, I am Spartacus. But then his best mate gets up and he goes, no, no, I am Spartacus. And like a guy that didn't even know that well goes, no, I am Spartacus. And like an old lady goes, no, I am Spartacus. And like a donkey goes, no, I am Spartacus. And everyone just goes, fuck me, a talking donkey. And, but, but the whole point of telling you this was, so he says, you know, do you, do you guys want to come and see Kirk Douglas' son do a gig? And we're like, oh, yeah, okay, so we do. We go and watch this guy. And he's not going very well, right? He's doing that some, thing that some comedians do where they get talking confused with humour, right? <laughs> so he's just, he's just kind of going, hey, what about dogs? The way they just walk around. What is going on with that? <laughs> and uh, what about T-shirts, huh? You put on a T-shirt and you just, like, you just wear it. What's that all about, you know? I mean, not that good, but like that, right? And... Uh, and people in the audience, they weren't being nasty to him, they were just stymied, you know, they were just like... And, and he cracked the shits, right? And just started abusing everyone in the audience. He says, hey, screw you, screw you guys. You know, they're all just going, what, what? And then he says, going, screw you, London. You know, I'm a genius. I'm a comedy genius. And they're all going, clearly. You know? and, uh, and then he just takes on the whole country, right? He says, he's going, screw you, England. Do you know who I am? I am Kirk Douglas' son. <laughs> and a guy in the audience, in the most inspired bit of heckling I've ever seen, <laughs> stood up and went, No, I am Kirk Douglas' son. <laughs> Oh, mate, I wrecked the New Year's Eve at the last laugh one really? night. I, I was hosting it 
and uh, and the and the owner um, said, "Oh mate, just grab the fire extinguisher and just give it to him." And I've gone, "Yeah, all right, I will." And I've grabbed the fire extinguisher. Of course, I've grabbed the chemical fire <laughs> and given it to the audience. Oh, and they've had to all be cleared out, evacuated from the from the room because there's just like white mist everywhere. There's on the tabletops is people's like the outline of people holding. <laughs> <laughs> People are out the front. <laughs> oh, that's Tim Smith. He's a pisser. <laughs> He's killed my fox stole. <laughs> the fox is coffee. <laughs> We were at Blenheim Palace, that's live from England. We were broadcasting live back to Australia. Went to Blenheim Palace, so we had the weirdest concoction of guests. We had Spike Milligan, and we also had Gary Glitter. Remember Gary Glitter, the original sort of glamour? <laughs> well, he, he's Glitter, a lot yeah. harder to get these days. Well, it turns out, <laughs> and, they, and I didn't realise, Spike Milligan hated Gary Glitter. In fact, they had a punch-up at Blenheim Castle, because Gary Glitter had taken off with Spike Milligan's girlfriend at one stage. But we didn't know that when we booked the show. Fantastic television. We missed, <laughs> we missed a whole lot of it. That show, I think, incidentally, was supposed to have Oliver Reed, the great uh, English actor. As well. <laughs> and Oliver was supposed to have showed up at a lot of places. Well, we, we'd booked Oliver Reed for the show, and Tani James, one of our producers, went to pick him up uh, from London and drive him to Blenheim Palace, and she pressed his little buzzer to his room, and his voice came through. Can, can I swear on your show? You can say what you like. This voice came through, because he used to drink a fair bit. This voice came through again. <laughs> Fuck off! <laughs> uh, like, you're supposed to be... I'm here to pick you up take you to Blenheim Palace. He said, Fuck off! <laughs> He'd been drinking since about nine o'clock. <laughs> so, Tani, thinking the show depended on it, brilliant piece of production, waited for someone to come out of the apartment block, snuck in, stood on the hall table and lit a match under one of the speakers. <laughs> the whole apartment block started to get drenched. Oliver Reed ran out into the street and said, fuck, it's, uh, there's a fire something. <laughs> and she said, I'll save you. Got him in the car. And <laughs> brought, him took him, brought him to the bloody palace. And he was still convinced that we'd saved him from being burnt alive. <laughs> Now, uh, Jeff, you and I have something in common. We are the only two people on the show tonight who haven't pashed Sigrid Thornton. Whereas, on the other hand, Shane and Glenn, you have both had occasion. Yeah, at separate times. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, Glenn, you uh, was uh, quite a while back on Comedy Company. Yes, and it was my first screen kiss. And I didn't know, but apparently it's a bit of a thing, Shane, you might know about this, but when, when someone's doing their first screen kiss, the trick is, is to not... Go, go lightly, go in big. And Sigrid, <laughs> Sigrid, she was a big, and is still a big star. And, she you went know, big. Yeah, she went big. And, uh, you know, I recall she... your words at the time. I think your words were, she fixed my little red wagon. Yes, yes. <laughs> I think uh, all my rivers ran. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Let's yeah. uh, have a little yeah. look at uh, a sketch featuring Glenn Robbins and Sigrid Thornton. Oh, dear. There have been too many broken promises. Oh, God. You I'd promised me you wouldn't eat garlic before a love scene again. I'm not fooling anyone with the way you're acting. Least of all the audience. <laughs> all right. <laughs> it's true. I've never stopped loving you. OK, it's a big line. Please don't mess it up. Nora, I can't do it. Nora, I can't bring myself to say it. Nora, I love you. <laughs> I'm thinking of Logie for this. Oh, Roger. I can always think of Mel Gibson. Nora. <laughs> Always think of Mel Gibson. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good line. Yeah. Go for it, Glenny. Yeah. Oh, yeah, keep going. I had Can I ask you, did you respond to the uh, you know what I mean? Did you did you get in it? Did you lose yourself in the moment? Did I grab her on the ass? Yeah. <laughs> what about yourself, Shane? Uh, MDA? Obviously, you've yeah. been working together for a little while. Well, well, probably wasn't as nerve-wracking. No, and it was probably the, more, the, more the mature kind of um, kiss. I'm, I'm a bit envious, actually, of the uh, huge passion. We're going to show you yours in a minute. I don't think you should be. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> you, you don't remember? <laughs> no. I think it was OK, wasn't it? Well, actually, the, the beauty was that I got to 
uh, Parish Sigurd a few times because <laughs> there was a storyline and, you know, I'd occasionally ask for another time. Uh, <laughs> yeah, fond memories, Trev. Well, uh, let's bring those flooding back now uh, from Shane Bourne and Sigurd Thornton in NDA. Be someone mature, intelligent. Mm, character having to justify <laughs> this, obviously. <laughs> Comfortable in his own skin. It's more like the comedy company. <laughs> <laughs> Can't say I know anyone who fits that description. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm a bit. So she's starting. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. She, yeah, she, yeah, yeah, yeah. Look out, look out, look out. Look out. Oh, oh, oh again, again. Hey, oh, there we go. <laughs> no. No. Oh, crazy. Yeah. Oh, She's honored better than mine. She's honored, honored. I need to get a copy of this. <laughs> oh, man. Back again. Oh. Yeah. What, no good? <laughs> that was fantastic. Fond memories of MDA. I hope you both enjoyed it because uh, this morning we popped around to see Secret. I'll and, get out. Uh, oh, just to get her perspective on it. Go to you, Sig. Yes, I have had the privilege of working alongside Shane and Glenn. And on both occasions, the script did call for us to share a little kiss together. Shane was an absolute gentleman, total professional, uh -oh. quite an easy scene to get through. Mm. Glenn, on the other hand, well, what can I say? It was like locking lips with someone sucking venom from a snake bite victim. <laughs> I was worried I was going to lose a feeling. Actually, that's not true. <laughs> I'm sure you know that, Glenn. But I do have a little surprise for you. Oh, no. Hi, Dad. <laughs> anyway, Glenn, my laws have been touched. Uh, beautiful. Uh, I had an incident with the police. I was uh, driving home from a, a Christmas drinks at yeah. a mate's place one night about uh, 3 o'clock in the morning. And I was about literally 20 metres from my house when I was sort of, woo, 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 you know, pull over. You know. So, uh, so I bounce out, you know, a bit of bravado. Hey, how you going there, guys? You know, hoping they might know me. And it was just all that. Uh, Lone Leith, uh, had any drinks tonight, driver? I went, no, oh, yeah, maybe a couple. Uh, just one long breath, thank you. So, you know, they're like, and they're doing this business going... Is that going, harmonica? Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's new type. And uh, they're doing this business going... Oh, no, looking at each other, yeah, what do you think? Mm. I'm going, yeah, they go, where do you live? I went, there, there. <laughs> right, right there, I live there. And they went, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, you can, you can go, you can go. So anyway, the next day I went to the shop and I, I came back home and the same cop is standing outside the front of my house. And I walk up and go, you're the guy, right, pulled me up last night. He said, yeah, yeah. I said, what can I do for you? He said, uh, actually, Trev, he said, uh, we're having our... Uh, work Christmas party tomorrow night <laughs> and we're wondering if uh, you knew anybody that might be able to come down and do a comedy skit, he says. So I'm going, for free. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm saying, mate, yeah, yeah, fine, fine. He said, how much would you charge? I said, mate, you didn't charge me, I don't charge you. <laughs> okay, right. So anyway. I go and do the function. It's all yeah, very nice there. The gig goes well, and I'm, I'm, I'm having a couple of drinks with them afterwards. They're giving me doubles. I'm going, boys, boys, what are you doing? They're going, Paul, no one's going to pull you up. We're all at the party, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. Anyway, it's all, all fine, and I go around and shake a few hands at the end, and I get the, the two guys that pulled me up, and I, you know, I'm, they're walking me out. And I said, look, yeah, Stu, you know, thanks a lot, mate. He's, you know, he's saying, thank you, Trevor. going, mate, no, 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 thank you, thank you. And he said, actually, Trev, uh, you only blew 0.03. <laughs> <laughs> and, he, and then his mate turns and said to me, he said, we were sitting outside your house for hours. We thought you'd never come home. <laughs> uh, I was asked to be part of Prank. Patrol, where kids... It's, it's like a candid camera show. Yeah. Where they, and they play some very elaborate pranks oh, on the kids involved. Very elaborate. And I was asked to be part of one called Super Dad. And the idea was I was to take my 8-year-old and my 12-year-old 
to a cafe. Uh, my 16-year-old would be in on the act, so she and I both had earplugs in. We had a director who was feeding us lines. I sat the kids down and I said, look, there's something I need to, to tell you, uh, something I've never told anyone, but I feel the time is right. I am a superhero. <laughs> <laughs> and of course they laughed well, and yeah. said, Dad, yeah, yeah, you know. right. <laughs> I said, no, see that bottle over there? And they said, yeah, and they all looked at it and I went, and the bottle exploded. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that is so weird. cool. And they <laughs> said, what, what? Dad, how did you? I said, look at this. You want that woman to drop that tray of plates and glasses? And they went, yeah. <laughs> and I said, watch this. And she dropped them. <laughs> and my eight-year-old completely freaked out. He said, Dad, stop! <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I don't like it! <laughs> And you can see Claudia, who's in on it, looking at me going, Dad, this is getting weird. <laughs> Dad, I don't like this. I don't want you to be a superhero. Oh. And I had to pick him yeah, yeah, up yeah. and take him outside, because I thought he's going to ruin this. We got outside. I said, Bub, it's just a show. It's prank patrol. And he goes, awesome, let's go. <laughs> Oh, we went back here. Beautiful. Yeah. That's so sweet. Yeah. Have, you, have you actually spent any time on something useless? Oh, yeah, I can do that. I do my escalator. Oh, uh, no. Oh, yeah, this is good. Just the escalator. I'll tell you how to do it, and then you can see it. OK. OK. But there's a trick to it. The trick really is, is you've got to look as you're going down, right? <laughs> right, 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 right. Here we go. Okay. Right. So right. do it from this way. So, right, so. <laughs> That's right. Probably something when you're down there. Right there. <laughs> oh. Okay, Russell. Now it's your turn, mate. Uh, get out there. What, Come on. What have you got for me? Okay. Where do you want to start? What oh, you want a hat. You want a hat? You there got you a go. footscray hat for me. There we okay. go. I, I used to learn stupid stuff. I don't know if I can still do mate, it. Mate, like I've never met anyone that wastes as uh, much time learning this stuff as you do. Oh, no. Wait there. Oh, 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 watch this. All right. Oh, I used to learn stupid stuff. <laughs> <laughs> now, like a hat. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. 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 Wait there. I just want to make sure it wasn't a fluke. Yeah. 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 Want to make sure. Trick, hat trick. <laughs> Stay there. What have you got? Stay there. Ah, uh, a cigarette. Now, no. we, now we, we don't condone smoking. Oh, we, please, yeah, we're not smoking. But I used to be able to kick him off my foot and catch him in my mouth, but I used to oh. light it. And I haven't done this for a long time because I, I practised it and then I realised it wasn't really worth practising. <laughs> Here we go, cigarette. Clean. Oh. OK, this one I know you can do. Here's the chocolate and the white chocolate lint ball. All right, white ball first. All right, black ball. There is a five-second rule, you know. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Give me one more. Come on, one more chocolate. Jermaine wants to... Uh, I'll, I'll try to pick one up, see what you can do. Have a look at this. You've got a bit of lint in your belly button. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. All right, ready? <laughs> Game couples play. I don't know if you've ever played it, but uh, sometimes, just in the course of conversation, the hypothetical subject comes up. Um, who would your partner let you sleep with and give you a free pass for? 
generally, uh, it's a hypothetical game where you, you know, you pick a celebrity who you, you would never see or meet, but. You know, sometimes it occurs. I mean, I probably cheated a bit. I said I'd like to uh, have my free pass with the single mum that lives in the apartment upstairs. <laughs> but, uh, it didn't really fly. But uh, actually, I don't play that game because my wife works on Hey Hey and you know, she's just as likely to say, uh, my free pass is George Clooney and, by the way, he's on the show tomorrow night, yeah. don't wait up. <laughs> Glenn, have you ever played that? Well, at our place it has actually gone the other way. Um, uh, when the lights go out, sometimes I will put a little voice on of one of my characters. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't like it, because I'll start off and I'll just go over and I'll, I'll, I'll start off with a little bit of Kel and I'll go, eh, about Kel works, she's magic fingers. And uh, <laughs> she goes, don't, that's, that's, that's not funny, don't, don't do that. So, and then, I'll, and then I'll move into a bit of Russell Court, you know, oh, this is my backyard and I'm going to, you know, work you like a crocodile. But what really upsets her <laughs> is when I finish off and I go, with a bit of Uncle Arthur, and, um, and I go, oh, boom, there you go, thank you very much. <laughs> Well, I haven't got a partner, but I'd love to fuck Sandra Bullock. <laughs>